Whenever we think of the ancient world, one of the first civilizations that comes to mind is that of the ancient Greeks. There were many ancient civilizations all over the world, from the Celts of Europe to the early dynasties in China, the Indus Valley in India, not to mention cultures in the Americas, Africa and Australia. But along with the ancient Egyptians, Persians and Romans, the Greeks have managed to take a hold of our imagination, partly due to the volume of evidence they left behind, partly due to their ideas and influence on other cultures, and partly due to our own biases as to what we think is important. So who were the ancient Greeks? Where could they be found? And what was Hellas? The ancient Greek civilizations were not limited to the same area as modern Greece. Ancient Greece included the Balkan Peninsula to be sure, but was centered less around the peninsula and more around the Aegean Sea, the islands within it, and the mountainous rocky coast surrounding it. This sort of coastal terrain meant that the ancient Greek lives were often centered around the ocean. Fishing and trade were important, and the ships required to navigate the sea became central to Greek cultures. On land, the mountainous, rocky terrain made it very hard for one group to control large areas. Compared to their rivals to the east, Greek territories were tiny. The result was often many different groups with their own areas of control, their own character, and their own social and political dynamics. Rather than see a single large area known as Greece, we should in fact see a collection of smaller city-states. This is Sparta! Or, more accurately, Laconia. Sparta itself was just a particular city within this region. This is Attica. Its principal city was Athens. This is Thebes. This is Macedonia. This is the narrow straits between Europe and Asia called the Hellespont. And this is the Isle of Lesbos. This is the coast of Ionia and Caria, which was made up of a number of small cities like Miletus, Samos, and Ephesus. And this is the island city-state of Rhodes. Rather than just call themselves Greeks, they identified themselves as citizens of their home city-state, calling themselves Laconians, Athenians, Macedonians, Milesians, or even... We can't have anyone freak out out there, okay? We've got to keep our composure! We've come too far! There's too much to lose! We've got to... Keep us Lesbians. These people may have identified themselves with their city first, but they also had a sense of something larger, just as we do when we call them Greeks. They spoke the same language and told the same stories. They shared history and culture. They traded goods with each other, and they also traded ideas and technology. They may have been Thebans or Ephesians, but they all regarded themselves as residents of a larger Greece, which they called Hellas. So someone from Athens would call themselves an Athenian and a Hellene. So it turns out that Greek history covers quite a lot of time. Early human remains and stone tools were found in Ionia that date back 1.2 million years. Genetic evidence points to hunter-gatherers inhabiting Greece around 45,000 years ago. Stone Age sites suggest that agriculture in Greece dates back at least 9,000 years. So when exactly was ancient Greece? Throughout history, there have been a number of civilizations surrounding the Aegean Sea. In the Bronze Age, the Minoan civilization survived on Crete, dominating the area from around 2000 BCE. The Mycenaeans began to dominate the area from around 1450 BCE. And then, in the Late Bronze Age, many of the civilizations in this area just disappeared. And historians are unsure as to why such a collapse would happen. Some have pointed to a series of earthquakes, droughts, or climate changes while others have pointed to records of mysterious attackers known as the Sea Peoples. What we do know, however, is that this collapse led to a period which has very few records and is known as the Greek Dark Ages. When we talk about ancient Greece, what we usually mean is the flowering of Hellas, which is the Iron Age civilization that emerged after the Dark Ages. This is the era of Sparta, Athens, Macedonia, and hundreds of competing city-states. Iron Age Greece can itself be divided up into three main periods, Archaic, Classical, and Hellenistic. Archaic Greece is usually dated from 776 BCE, the date of the first Olympic Games. It's a period in which a number of Greek city-states like Athens, Sparta, Macedonia, they all emerged from the Dark Ages and each built distinctive systems. A democratic culture in Athens, a military elite culture in Sparta, and a centralized kingship in Macedonia. Despite their political differences, 
The Hellenes were forced to come together and become allies in the face of a growing, powerful neighbour, Achaemenid Persia, who against all odds were defeated in two separate wars, fighting battles which we still remember today. Classical Greece started after the wars with Persia, and was a period of growing Greek influence and wealth. It becomes the golden age of Athenian democracy, philosophy, drama and art. It's also a period of arrogance, military innovation and devastating wars, where city-states vied for control of the Greek world. Athens and Sparta fought a series of destructive Peloponnesian wars. The Thebans grew in influence, and finally, King Philip of Macedonia crushed all Greek resistance while his son, Alexander the Great, turned his sights on the original enemy, Persia. And he never lost a battle. The death of Alexander the Great in 323 BCE began the Hellenistic period. This period saw Alexander's single empire split between his generals. Each new empire, like Egypt, becoming a curious mix of Hellenistic and local cultures. These empires, however, couldn't withstand the rise of a new power in the west, Rome. Despite the Romans being heavily influenced by the Greeks, the expansion of the Roman Republic saw Greece come under Roman rule in 146 BCE. The Roman civil wars and victory of Augustus Caesar in 31 BCE saw Cleopatra, the last Hellenistic ruler of Egypt, choose the wrong side and fall. Compared to the Bronze Age civilizations like Minoa and Mycenae, we seem to know an awful lot about Iron Age Greece. We seem to know where exactly it was and how far it reached. We seem to know when exactly it was, down to particular dates, even though it was over 2,000 years ago. So how do we know about the Greeks? And what sources are there for such specific information? One of the reasons we know so much about Hellas is because the Hellenes love to write. They developed an alphabet around 800 BCE and used it to record epic poetry and speeches, stories, fables, mysterious aphorisms, histories, tragic and comedic plays, philosophical theories, and even laws and constitutions. This writing can be found inscribed in stone and written on parchment and papyrus. Many original fragments survive to this day. The Hellenes were known for their distinctive sculptures and pottery, and these items last a long time. As a result, Remnants of the Greeks can be found all over the Aegean, the Mediterranean, and far beyond. In fact, writings from the time, combined with archaeological evidence, tell us that Greek influence spread as far as northern Europe, Somalia, and Afghanistan. Greek architecture was epic. In a list of seven ancient wonders of the world, the Hellenes built five. Along with the Great Pyramids in Egypt and the Great Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Hellenes built massive temples, lighthouses, and mausoleums. On the island of Rhodes, there was even a huge statue named the Colossus of Rhodes. It was apparently so big that some people believed that ships could sail underneath it to enter the harbour. While the Colossus of Rhodes has been largely lost, other evidence of Greek architecture remains throughout the Greek world, including iconic buildings like the Parthenon, which looks over Athens even today. Lastly, we know a lot about the Greeks because of how much they influenced the cultures around them. Greek philosophy, theatre and architecture were so impressive upcoming civilizations like the Romans idealized them and copied them at every opportunity. They made countless references to the Hellenes in their own literature, laws and histories. Later cultures, particularly medieval Muslims, valued the insights of the Greeks so much that they painstakingly copied Greek texts so that they could be preserved and passed on. All of this evidence, plus buried weapons, sunken cities, shipwrecks, burials and even a mysterious machine known as the Antikythera mechanism point to an incredibly diverse and sophisticated civilization, one whose ideas still inspire us today. Around which sea were the Hellenes based? What was the period after Mycenaean Greece and before Iron Age Greece? What were the three main periods within Iron Age Greece? Name three Hellenic city-states. What remains might you find from a Greek city or colony? Who overtook the Hellenes in 146 BCE?
This is blasphemy. This is madness. 